Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We are going to make some videos for Databricks beginners. Today we are going to create a mount point and use this mount point to access and read data from an Azure data lake. Now a mount point is nothing else than a connection between Azure Databricks and your Azure data lake. We are also going to use an Azure service principal and Azure key vault to store the service principal credentials to the key vault. Now, you don't have to use a service principal to connect to your data lakes, to your data lake from your Azure Databricks environment, but this is the best practice. This is common practice at work on a production level, and that's what we are going to do. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's start from the beginning. The first thing we have to do is create an Azure Key Vault. So click on Key Vaults, click on Create, Resource Group, provide a resource group. Let me provide this one, Azure Key Vault name, demo, Key Vault, your region, West Europe for me, pricing tier, standard, yep, leave everything as is, click on Next, here click on vault access policy add yourself as well next enable yeah all networks next and then review and create and let's create an azure key vault click on create let's wait for the key vault to be deployed the key vault has been deployed now you can see yourself under access policies that you have all the key permissions, secret permissions, etc., etc. This is necessary in order to be able to generate and import secrets, to view your secrets. If you don't add yourself, you will not have access to this uh, blade here, to keys and secrets and certificates. Now, if you're going to do it manually, you go into your uh, access policies, click on create, select, uh, for example, secret permissions, and then next and then select your service principal for example if i uh, add myself it's here and then click on next next and create but i have already done that so i have already added myself now we have this key vault here let's uh, go to azure to azure active directory which is currently known as microsoft entra id I don't know why they changed the name, probably they didn't have anything else to do. So here what we want is to scroll down to the app registration blade here, click on new registration and create a new service principal. So let's provide a name, demo Apple. click on register. And now we have created a service principal, which is basically just an identity. So we can add a certificate or secret, which I recommend. So let's add a client secret. Let's call it secret uh, SVP. Click on add. And you see here we have the value. So click on that value. Let's go back to our secrets. Let's generate. Call this. Let's paste the value here and call this as um, secret demo yep uh, svp for example click on create and also what we need from the service principal is go into the overview tab and we need the application client id so copy that create a new a new secret in your key vault paste the value call this application id demo svp right click on create <clears throat> and now we have stored in the key vault the service principal secret and the service principal application id which we are going to use in our databricks environment in order to connect to our data lake now that we have this service principal here svp demo apple what we need is to grant access to this service principal, which is an identity to our Azure data lake. So we go here to our data lake under access control, add, add role assignment. And 
sets for contributor uh, where we are. storage block data contributor click on next select member select your service principal here add it review and assign and now you provided access to your uh, to your service principal so we can read data from the data lake now what we need to do is actually to access the key vault from Azure Databricks. How can we do that? We have to create a secret scope in Databricks. So according to the documentation we have here, we go into our Databricks environment. We use this has secrets uh, slash create scope. We go to our Databricks instance. We paste that at the end and here we go. We have this page. So let's create a new scope, scope demo 5, for example, creator, the DNS name. So let's go back to our key vault into properties. You can see uh, the key vault here, URI, copy that. Uh, actually, that's the DNS, right? Yep. And here the resource ID that you can find it here under resource ID, copy that and paste it here. And that's how we can create a secret scope that it will provide us access to the key vault to get the credentials for the service principal. And then use the service principal to connect to, to create the mount point and connect to the data lake. So click on OK. And now let's go back to our Databricks notebook. If you want to see to list all the scopes that you have created, so run this command. Let me start the cluster first. And this will list all the commands, uh, all the secret scopes that you have created. Give it a second. The cluster is up. And as you can see, we printed the secret scopes. This is the last one that we created. You can create as many as you want. So here you copy that. You can use widgets or straight up place the value in this configuration dictionary here. Let's use the widget. So let's create a widget with a key vault underscore scope name and then get the value from the widget. And then we have to paste, as you can see, we have the type, the provider type. These are standards but we have to replace the client id and here is how we get the secret the value of the client id from the key vault using the secret scope that we created here scope underscore demo5 so dbutils.secrets.get provide the secret scope uh, value and then what uh, the attribute you want from the key vault so for example here if we go back to our secrets what we want from here is the application ID demo SVP. So let's go back here, paste it because that's the client ID. So essentially we do that for security reasons. We, want, we don't want to display the actual value of the application ID because someone can use it. And then in the client secret, we use dbutils.secrets.get Again, the scope and the credential. So let's go back to the key vault. And the credential is this one, secret demo SVP, right? Paste it here. And for the endpoint, the only thing that you have to do is to replace this part with your tenant ID. How can you find your tenant ID? You go back to your um, Azure Active Directory. And then you can see tenant ID. You copy this value and you paste it here right i have already done that so let's use that let's run this command we actually got this error because we forgot to provide the key vault scope here in the widget so if you paste that uh, this your secret scope here on the widget and pass it as a parameter and run it again the code will run fine and then here is how we create the mount point we have to provide the source which is abfsss slash uh, here is the container name which is test right so if we go back to our data lake you will see the container 
name is test here we select this container and then you also have to select your data lake which is the name of the data lake you can find it here right and then you have to provide the mount point usually is slash mount slash whatever you want here we use lake and first we try to unmount if you know this mount point already exists usually we try if we want to update the mount point or just make sure that this mount point uh, doesn't exist so we use a try and accept statement dbutils dot fs dot unmount you provide the mount point here and then let's print the source the mount point and the configs you can see and then we in order to mount again we have to use dbutils dot fs dot mount the source the mount point and the under extra configs we provide the configs that we used here so let's run this code as you can see it will take a, I have already mounted so it will unmount the mount point so it will take a while and then it will recreate it and then we can display the mount points and see that we will have a mount point like that let it run okay here we go uh, it has been mounted this is equals to true you can see all these that here it was unmounted at first and then we print uh, the values and then when we mount it uh, prints true that means we mount it successfully and let's display all the mount points using display and then dbutils.fs.mount and we are able to see all the mount points now here we are you can see all the mount points and here is the one that we created so instead of using the full path here to the data lake, we use slash mount slash lake and we don't have to use the whole path again and again, which is very useful. Now, if you want to see if you have access to this mount point, you use uh, percentage FS LS and you provide the mount point. You do that and it should display all the data that has there give it a second yeah you can see we have three files under this uh, mount point which is the csv and two folders here uh, if we go back to our uh, data lake you can see under the test container we have two folders and one csv and how can you read the csv it's uh, very easy using the mount point so spark.read.format the header and dot load and here we provide the mount point and the extension which is the file name so you don't have to use the whole path again and again and then we can display the data from this csv file as you can see it's pretty simple and this is how you can use a mount point this is how we do it at work this is it for today guys there is no point to upload the notebook on github as it's just a few lines of code that you can find on the documentation anyway. It's common practice to use mount points to avoid reusing the full path. Also remember, it's the best to use a service principal and key vault for security reasons. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.